All right, we got cut off in the last one. We were talking about Darfur, and that was between the uh, Sudanese in the north uh, and the South Sudanese, which are now separate countries, um, <clears throat> which were largely Christian and animist. And so Darfur was a lot of fighting in the 90s, and they eventually solved that by uh, creating South Sudan in 2011. And then ISIS, uh, fighting in Syria and Iraq, uh, they were looking to just eliminate anybody that was uh, not Muslim in their eyes, and even other Muslims that were not strong enough Muslim. All right, stereotypes. Another common thing. Um, these are so common, we, we forget that we use them, and we all use them. So let's just you know get that out of the way. Everyone uses them. Uh, so um, stereotype is where it's a set of ideas based on distortion, exaggeration, and oversimplification, and you apply it to all m members of some group in society. So the dumb jock, you know, the smart or the, the guy that's really good in athletics, but, you know, terrible in the classroom. The dumb blonde, you know, the, the pretty girl or the pretty guy uh, who's blonde, who, you know, has nothing, you know, upstairs. They, 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 they can't think. Uh, the absent-minded scientist, you know, think of like Big Bang Theory. Socially inept computer nerd kind of similar okay so so yeah th those are stereotypes and um and we all use them and they're so common we forget about them i mean i'm polish and you know i grew up when i was a kid people making polish jokes and even my my dad and grandfather who are polish would make polish jokes and you know thinking back we probably shouldn't have but you know we we all do it um <clears throat> and then we even make exceptions for those who don't fit the stereotypes and exceptions are even worse because then we're like oh you're not like all those others so you know Polish are supposed to be, you know, incompetent. And I had, you know, friends say, oh, you know, you're, you're actually smart, unlike most Polish people. And it's like, okay. So yeah, that's, that's an exception. And then going back to our early colonial days, Native Americans were seen as helpful. Uh, you know, think of what, when the pilgrims came over, they portrayed them as the noble savage. They helped them, you know, plant fish in the ground to create, you know, crops or whatever. And, and so anyway, they, well, yeah, they, they used the Native American uh, techniques to farm and were able to survive, okay? Well, then, as more and more Europeans arrive, uh, the Native Americans, you know, didn't want them there. They knew they were going to take their land, and so then it became, oh, well, they're just getting in the way. So the noble savage, the helpful uh, individual, gave way to a, you know, a troublemaker that had to be removed. All right, <clears throat> and then we talk about hate crimes. There were actually two prominent ones in 1998. Um, I was in college when this happened. Both made national news. Uh, the first was this man, uh, African-American man from Texas named James Byrd. Uh, he, if I remember the story right, he was waiting uh, on the side of a road in a rural area, hoping for a ride. Um, three men pulled up. Uh, two of them were known white supremacists, and um, they beat him, and then they uh, tied uh, his feet to the back of their truck, and they drug him to death. And then uh, they, they made a, a documentary about this. They famously, um, they, you know, once his uh, body, uh, it basically it was so damaged, um, parts of it flew off, that sounds gross to say, and they just went to a barbecue. They went to a barbecue and, and joked with some people about what they had done. And later on, they found out about it. One of them turned state's evidence. Two of the three were given the death penalty. The third turned against the others. And one of those two has been executed. The other person is still on death row. Okay, and the other guy received life in prison. That was kind of his deal. You tell what happened and you won't get executed. And then this man, young, young gay man by the name of Matthew Shepard, uh, he was a student at University of uh, Wyoming, or at least he, I don't know if he was a student at the university, but he lived in, in that town. And he was uh, beaten and left for dead in a Wyoming field. A farmer actually came upon him, uh, thought he, someone had put a scarecrow, and then when he got close, realized um, he was barely breathing. Well, he never, he never made it. Within a week, he was dead. Uh, the witnesses that were there claimed that two men killed Shepard uh, over his sexual orientation, that he had um, hit on them or something, and they had what they, they called it gay panic defense was their defense. And still a big debate, but in 2009, after over a decade of ad advocacy by both families, um, the Shepard Bird hate crimes law passed. It was the first federal hate crimes law since 1960, okay? All right, so in 2010, remember all of our numbers here are from 2010 because we don't have the 2020 census numbers yet. In 2010, just over 6,600 hate crimes were reported. A bit less than half were racially motivated. 20% were the result of religious pre prejudice and or sexual orientation, okay? Nearly 13% related to ethnicity. A majority, six out of 10 of these crimes were committed by white men. And then 
there are three perspectives, the three different perspectives regarding hate crimes. The functionalists say that members of a group use hatred to foster a sense of unity. That in other words, um, you know, that they, they feel left out. And so in a group, they can collectively hate this individual or this group, and that, you know, brings them together. Kind of like the Klan. Ku Klux Klan is a good example there. Uh, conflict theorists say that hate crimes are used because a perpetrator is threatened by the livelihood of the minority. They're afraid. And, um, you know, they're afraid of the individual or they're afraid of what they stand for. And so that's why they act out. And then symbolic interactions say that hate crimes always occur because of labeling the other. You know, oh, those people that, you know, rather than take the time to get to know them or anything, you just lump them all together and use prejudice and racism to judge them, okay? All right, so what are the theories on discrimination? So the functionalists, uh, again, the, the dominant group fosters a sense of superiority over minority group, which strengthens that group's sense of self. So in other words, um, the dominant group wants to feel better than. So they're going to use whatever they can to do that. And so the example that they use to study that is not racially based, but the Stanford prison experiment. Uh, before that, we talked about that in our first unit. Before the, uh, you know, before the the experiment started, everyone was in the same boat, and literally twelve guys became prisoners, and twelve guys became, you know, jailers, uh, became guards, and you know, flip of the coin could have been the other way. But again, they showed that they established their dominance. Uh, conflict theorists: the majority uses prejudice discrimination as as its weapons of power to control minority groups. So. Again, minority groups are sometimes pitted against each other by the majority. And so the idea was they won't be able to pool their resources against the majority. So um, during the 1992 LA riots, Asians and African Americans were shown as major antagonists, largely because the businesses in black neighborhoods were owned by Koreans and other Asian ethnic groups. And there was some lingering resentment. Um, there was actually an incident that occurred before uh, the Rodney King beating uh, where a uh, a black girl by the name of Latasha Harlan was shot by a Korean store owner, um, supposedly for stealing, but, you know, she didn't have anything in her hands, and they just shot her in the back as she was leaving the store, and nothing was done. So there was a lot of antagonism, lingering antagonism, between uh, the Asian American community and the African American community, especially in the South Central part. Um, symbolic interactions, members of a group learn to be prejudiced because that's how they're taught or raised. For example, the book cites the negative connotation with the word black. You know, something black is usually connotated negatively. And so it then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where the members of the minority group do not see any positive correlation, so they reinforce the negative behavior. You know, what, what good is it for me to do this? Because everyone sees me as, you know, trouble or uh, a problem or whatever. And so they simply don't try to do anything to change that mentality. All right, so... How's discrimination today? Despite all of our civil rights laws, um, America still has what we call institutionalized discrimination. That means it's so ingrained that laws don't even solve it, okay? Um, minority groups have struggled. Uh, keep in mind that a lot of jobs, seniority systems reward, reward workers for how long they've been there. And so minority workers often are part-timers or were hired much later and therefore um, they don't get established. And in the old days, they called this last hired, first fired. We were the last hired whenever they looked for workers, and as soon as they didn't need us anymore, they let us go. Um, our schools have resegregated. Uh, when we integrated our schools after the Brown case, white families fled. They called it white flight for the suburbs, and so that left African Americans to stay in underperforming urban schools by themselves. Okay, And then in terms of racial groups, African Americans are the largest racial minority group in the nation. Women are actually the largest minority group, ev uh, even though they are a majority of the population. Um, Latino or Latinx is considered an ethnicity, not a racial group, and this group has grown 43% in population uh, since 2000. The highest increase, though, in terms of percentage is Asian Americans, 43.3, okay? All right, and then we will pick up with barriers to assimilation. We're going to talk about individual groups and, you know, how each of these different ethnic groups have changed and what has been good and what has been bad.